The big news this week, of course, was the killing of Osama bin Laden. What's your reaction? Well, of course, uh, I, like all Americans, are delighted to see somebody like that who committed such a crime against us uh, dead and gone. Uh, there's still, you know, lots of things to think about on foreign policy and ask questions about why did it take 10 years and why did it cost more than 5,000 American lives and uh, why is it that he was harbored in a country that's supposed to be an ally, he gets a lot of money from us and why are we fighting in Afghanistan? So in spite of the pleasure most Americans, or maybe all Americans, will get from, from the death of Osama bin Laden, uh, I think that uh, it raises as many questions as it answers. And uh, I have generally over the years been asking those questions. I did vote for the authority to go after those individuals responsible for 9-11, which meant to go after bin Laden in, uh, in, in, in Afghanistan. But that authority did not say, nor did I think it implied, that it endorsed invasion of many countries, nation building, and fighting people who had nothing to do with 9-11. How do you think uh, the death of bin Laden could affect U.S. foreign policy? How did, who would affect it? The, how could the death of oh. bin Laden affect U.S. foreign policy? <laughs> well, um, some people may become complacent about our foreign policy, you know, and just say that it's good. One thing I heard uh, people talking about that I think is very, very dangerous, uh, that a useful tool in, in foreign policy and having this perpetual undeclared war worldwide against terrorism is that uh, torture is a useful tool. I think that is very, very dangerous, and yet that is what they talk about. But I don't think... Um, it's going to change our foreign policy, even though it should. I mean, it should. I mean, we should be at the point now of saying, well, the goal was to get those responsible for 9-11. He's the ringleader, and he's dead. So, in Maybe. other words, you'd like to see us get out of sure. Afghanistan sooner rather sure. than later. And this would be a good time to do it. Uh, right now. Right, right now. Say, you know, Al-Qaeda is not there. We're fighting a band of people who are revolutionaries. They're involved in a civil war. The Taliban, the Taliban is different than the Al-Qaeda. And uh, the most anybody estimates that we may... Uh, Al-Qaeda might be in Afghanistan is maybe a hundred. Some people think even less. And uh, I, I just think that uh, we should change our foreign policy. Things should change, but I'm afraid uh, the process will continue and uh, use the same tools that we have used, and we're going to perpetuate this in, until we're totally bankrupt. What about our financial aid to Pakistan? Well, seeing that I don't endorse financial aid to anybody, I mean, we certainly shouldn't be giving aid to a country that probably, uh, you know, protected uh, bin Laden. It's pretty hard to think that their Secret Service and their security agents and, and their government didn't know that he was hiding in, in broad daylight, so to speak. So, uh, no, we, we shouldn't be giving them aid. At the same time, we give them aid. Uh, we're also dropping bombs on them. It's, it's such a ridiculous foreign policy. Uh, and it complicates things, and uh, I think it's going to continue, and uh, <clears throat> I don't think we're going to be backing off at all. Do you think his death could affect the 2012 elections? Oh, sure. I How mean, so? I think the American people are very pleased, but the, the, the election is a long time off. Sure. I mean, uh, they were very people were very pleased with uh, George Bush Sr., with uh, Kuwait, you know, <laughs> would he have a positive rating of 95% and he lost the election a year or two later. So uh, things can change and maybe the economy will be the big issue. So you could say <clears throat> this has produced a lot of positive uh, points for Obama. We still are doing exactly what Obama, uh, uh, ben, ben Laden wanted us to do. Such as? <laughs> and that is to stay there and drain ourselves, drain our military, uh, get dissension 
expansion going in our country and bankrupt our country. That, those are his stated were his stated goals, and so uh, he he's uh, he's been laughing at us for a long time, and uh, maybe he's going to have our last laugh because if if my assumptions are correct and we don't come home, the bankruptcy is going to march on. And we are going to suffer from it. I mean, this, this is very, very serious. And expenditures in the military budget is very significant. It's not like a couple nickels and dimes. It's a perpetual. Uh, we're endlessly involved in so many countries. And uh, I, I just think that uh, uh, the, the, the connection between the foreign policy and the financial problems we have is, uh, is very significant. What would you say to those who are doubtful that this assassination actually took place, <laughs> uh, that Osama bin Laden was buried at sea, that we do have photographs and so on. <laughs> I, what would you say? I, I, to them? The question I have is, why? Why does our government invite <laughs> conspiracy theories all the time? I mean, why didn't they show a picture? Nobody questions uh, uh, Saddam Hussein's death. They showed pictures and pictures of his son, and you know, I don't, I don't hear any conspiracy theories about that. Um, maybe there was a teeny bit at the beginning, but uh, no. Why? Why does our government do that? You know, and I have a medical question, trying to confirm the time. Timing, you know, I understand he was killed uh, like Sunday afternoon, and by Sunday at nine o'clock, it was announced that the president would speak, and that they had DNA proof of the individual. For, to my knowledge, I didn't know they could do DNA proof that quickly. Then they came back and they said. Uh, well, we had uh, uh, facial features, and we'll get the results of the DNA layer. It's that confusion, and I just sort of hate to talk about it in detail until we know more about the information. You know, every day you get a little bit more information. So would you consider yourself among the doubters? On this? No, I wouldn't say, well, I don't know whether you want doubter, all of a sudden you're into conspiracies. I would say I'm still looking for a lot more information. You know, uh, uh, governments tend to fib. Some people call it lying when it comes to war. Sometimes we go to war, whether it was Vietnam or Iraq, you know, gross distortion of the reality. So uh, the war propagandists are, are very, uh, very much into distorting information to uh, get a consensus uh, with the people. So, yeah, I, I, I'd like to see all the information come in and look how long it took us to sort out uh, the real cause of Vietnam. You know, the Pentagon Papers, that didn't happen, and I was in the service at that time. I didn't know anything about the Pentagon Papers, so it was only later on history has come back to show exactly what went on in Vietnam.